That's right. We're back. Virtual math. Live from the man cave once again. Alexa, stop. All right. It is Thursday, day day nine. I don't know if I said that or not, but it's day nine of the packet. Uh, and actually, this is going to be the last video that I make for the packet. Because if you've looked at day 10, it's a 25 question assessment. Um, it's almost like an EOG Friday sheet. Obviously, it's a little bit longer than that. Uh, so my plan for that is going to be, uh, I'm going to do a live Zoom on Friday. And it's only really if you needed help on a specific question. Like if you go through all five of those or all 25 of those questions and feel really good about it, then you're good. Uh, if there's maybe three or four that you struggled on, I'm going to... I'm going to say I'm going to have my Zoom meeting open tomorrow, which is Friday, um, from 5 to 6. That's That way it gives you time to knock it out in the morning. You don't have to rush to finish it. But from 5 to 6 tomorrow, I lied. I'm going from 4 to 5. So let me start that over. From 4 to 5 tomorrow, I'll have a live Zoom open. Uh, I'll email the Zoom link. I'll also post, post it on class tag. But if you have a question, you can come in on your own time. Um, we'll go through whatever questions you might have had. Um, and if nobody comes, nobody comes. I guess I would take that as a good sign that everybody knew what they were doing. But if you have a question, uh, it's going to be real casual from four to five. Pop in if you need to, and I can answer anything that you might have. Um, also with live Zooms, Miss G sent out an email. I don't know if she posted it on her class tag, but I'm going to post it on mine. We're going to have a live Zoom on Sunday. That's going to show you exactly how you need to start navigating next week to be successful with virtual learning because we're going to be posting things on Canvas uh, and Google Classroom. Now, your kids are very familiar with Canvas. Uh, Google Classroom is new. I still need you to join that if you haven't. I think I've got seven from each class that have not gone in and joined. So I emailed them that link. If you need a new code, let me know. I can get it for you. Um, but those things you're really going to need to be um, pretty familiar with if you're going to be doing well while doing this learning at home. Um, it, it's going to be a really big lesson in responsibility and accountability for these kids because I'm not going to be there to stand over them and make sure they're getting work done. And students, if you're listening, your parents are not going to be there to stand over your shoulder. They've got a job. They might be working from home. They might still be at work. So it's really going to fall on you to be responsible for this stuff um, and making sure you're getting it done. So it's going to be a learning experience, but I think it's going to be really good for everybody in the long run. All right, I covered Zooming, live Zooming, Google Classroom. I think we're good. So if you're watching, you have finished day nine. Uh, going through this, minus the one that you can't answer because it's not shaded, they made you do a little bit of work today. I like that they made you do some converting. They made you do some simplifying. They didn't just give you the easy answer, which is what we like. We like a challenge. Um, we like being able to use that mental toughness and a mental checklist to find the answer. So I do have... Another special guest with me here today. Let me get my setup straight. I got to use this camera. I got to kick this one out. And I got to bring this one in. Let's see. Tristan, you with us? Yeah. Awesome. Before we start, show us your jersey. It's nice. only going to be mad. It's, it's, not, it's my literally jersey. Right. So did you know that today was supposed to be opening day for Major League Baseball? Yeah. Yeah, I, I wish, but there's nothing we can do about that. All right, before we do some math, 
I'm going to ask you three questions, same questions that I've asked. Um, who do I have? I had Lily, Aiden, I had Miss G. So I'm going to start with this one. What has been your favorite thing about being home so far? Um, well, playing PlayStation and having baseball practices. Have you guys still been practicing for baseball? Well, this week we canceled it because we this week we canceled it, but last week we had practices. Yeah, but you can't cancel PlayStation, can you? No. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think so. Uh, second question, what has been your least favorite thing about being home? Um, seeing my friends at school and doing in Queen of Multiplication. Yeah, I was telling Aiden a couple of days ago, he was on pace to beat that record. Now I don't know what's going to happen. So that's a bummer for him. Yeah. All right. Last question. Have you been doing anything special at yeah. home to stay organized? Yeah. Yes. We're doing the schedule. Nice. So now, do you like your schedule or is it a schedule that your parents made? A uh, schedule my parents made. I figured. But that's good. It's good to have some sort of schedule so you have stuff to do. All right, so Tristan, you said you've got your packet with you, right? Let me get this pulled yes. up here. I've got to find my packet. New share. Boom, boom. All right, I'm going to read number one, and then what I'm going to have you do is I'm just going to have you talk me through it, and I'm just going to use the whiteboard to kind of solve it as you're talking. All right, so number one says, four friends each ate two-thirds of an apple. How many apples did the four friends eat in all? So, Tristan, how would you get this one started? Um, I would do four times two-thirds. That equals eight-thirds. And so eight thirds is an improper fraction, so I would change it to a mixed number, and and three can go into eight two times, and the remainder is two, and the denominator stays the same. So that would give you two and two thirds, which is D. So in the past couple of days, it would have given us eight thirds as an answer choice, Today, it actually made us think a little bit. So I like that question. Um, I want you to look at answer choice A. It says eight twelfths. How do you think somebody would have gotten that one? Because you started by saying- They four. will multiply the- Go ahead, I'm sorry. They would have- they would have multiplied the numerator and the denominator. Right, but you, not you just the numerator. Perfect. You did it the right way. You knew you were only supposed to do your numerator. So for number one, that would have been D. You did a great job explaining that one. Let's move over across to number two. And there was one like this, I think, yesterday. It says Thomas lives more than fifty-five hundredths of a kilom kilometer and less than seventy-five hundredths of a kilometer from his school. Which choice could be the distance Thomas lives from his school? So Tristan, what did you say was your answer here and why? It wouldn't be A because that's less than 55. It wouldn't be B because it's less than 55. It would be C because it's bigger than 55 but not smaller than, but smaller than 75. It wouldn't be D because 70 because one one thirty hundreds is bigger than zero seventy five hundreds. Perfect. So for that one we would have had C. Uh which one of those is A, B, C, or D, which one of those is the greatest? Um C. Look at your whole numbers. Okay, which, one? which one would be the greatest? Oh, Oh, D. D, good. And which one would be the D smallest? Be the... Um, A. 
A would definitely be the smallest. Good. All right, two for two. You've got one more. We're going to look at number three. Hey, when you're looking at your screen, do you see the packet on my screen right now? Yes. Okay, perfect. All right, Skylar yeah. needs five-sixths of a cup of sugar to make a cake. She was to make four cakes. How much sugar will she need to make all of her cakes? So this one's very similar to number one. Walk me through this. Yeah. So you would do four times five six. That will get you twenty six. And twenty six is a improper fraction, so you would make it a mixed number. And so six can go into twenty three times. And the remainders to, and the denominator stays the same. Is <laughs> denominator stays the same? And that is not an answer. So you would simplify it. Good. The fractions for two is one and two. Um, and the and for six it will be one, two, three, and six. And your GCF would be two. And if you simplify that down, it would be one third. Divide both of those by two, you get one third. And what's the last thing I'd have to do to that? You add the three. Don't forget three that whole number. number. Perfect. So I'd get three and one third, which would be C. That one again, Perfect. not only did we have to convert, you had to simplify. Good job. Tristan, round of applause for you, sir. You did a great job. Before I let you go, um, have you joined our Google Classroom yet? Yes. You are the man. Yes, I have. Perfect. And before I send you out, is there anything you want to say to the people watching at home? Um, stay studying your multiplication cards. Read every night. That's all I have to say. You are the man. Tristan, thank you for joining the show. Hopefully we'll see you soon. Yes. All right. Thanks, buddy. Bye. All right. Tristan did an awesome job. Not surprised. Let's get our professional look angle back in here. And we are off. Let's get back to it. Number four. It says, which of the following represents K on the number line? So look. The one thing that I remember saying when we did these number lines on with the decimals, we try to make our numbers look the same or our decimals look the same. And if you're looking at the answer choices, most of them are in hundredths. You had one that's in tenths. Now, the number line is all in tenths. So I kind of have to decide, do I want to go tenths? Do I want to go hundredths? And honestly, sometimes it makes the decision for you. Because if you look at C and you look at D, you cannot turn those from hundreds to tenths. You don't have a zero that you can take away. So instead of changing everything to tenths, I'm going to change everything to, a hun to hundreds. And I want to see if this is going to work. I'll be pumped if it does. Annotate. Oh, that's way too big. So we're just not going to do that. So just follow my mouse. Right here, I would add a zero and make that 20 hundredths. That would stay the same, but it's up on the number line here. Instead of one tenth, this would be 10 hundredths, 20 hundredths, 30 hundredths, 40 hundredths, 50 hundredths. Now look, we're looking for K, which is right here. It's in between 30 and 40 hundredths. Now you could have gotten rid of A from the very start, because if you look at two tenths on the number line, that's J. So that one would have gone. Now, 30 hundredths on the number line would be right here, because you could actually change that one to tenths. K is not on this line. Now, if you're looking at 35 hundredths, that number would come in between 30 and 40, and it couldn't be D, because 45 hundredths comes after 40 hundredths. Now, you could, if it was looking for M, your answer would be D. But if you're looking for K, 35 hundredths would fall right there between three and four tenths. So for number four, you should have had C. 
And really, I think that one's easy to eliminate answer choices to get you left with just one possibility. So hopefully we're getting that right and you got another one similar to that down at the bottom. All right, number five, we've been answering a bunch of questions like this, writing stuff different ways. It says, which decimal is equivalent to the mixed number? Guys, if you can say that mixed number out loud, you should be able to get the answer choice. That is five and one tenth. Remember, when we say that word and, you should be thinking of a decimal right there. So if we're looking for five and one tenth, B, which is right here, five and one tenth, one number after the decimal, B would have been your answer there. I want you to say what A would be out loud. Say it. Did you say it? Five and one hundredth. Two numbers after the decimal. Looking at C. Say it out loud. Five and eleven hundredths. And then looking at D. Guys, that's just 51. You wouldn't say 51 and 0 tenths. Remember, whole number always to the left of the decimal. That would just be 51, which is way more than what we're looking for. So for that one, you would have had B for number five. Number six, I, yai, 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 yai. They didn't shade anything in. Skip it. Don't worry about it. We're counting this out of 11. But goodness gracious, that's happened a couple days this week. All right, number seven. We had one similar to this, and I actually showed you two different ways that you could have done it. Um, one way you could have done it was you could have said, okay, I have one whole figure shaded and then five tenths of another figure, which as a fraction would just look like this one and five tenths. But if you're looking at your answer choices, they are all in decimals. So all you would have to do there is take one and five tenths and write it a different way, which goes with what we just did in number five, one and five tenths which if you look at your answer choices that would be a you could have also said well let me do it this way i've got 10 tenths plus five tenths and that gives me 15 tenths which still is not an answer choice you could have changed it to a mixed number and gotten one and five tenths which takes me back to where we just were originally. And then I could write that as a decimal. I think most people probably like doing it the way where they say, hey, I see one hole and then a fraction of another hole. So they know they're going to get a mixed number. All you had to do there is rewrite it as a decimal. So number seven, you should have had a. Number eight, not a whole lot of a challenge here. Uh, it says, which fraction represents the model? Well, guys, you know we're in tenths. You just got to look at how many are shaded. There's three shaded, three tenths is your answer, and that choice is B. Not much to do there, so let me give you a little bit to do. I would like for you to write this somewhere three other ways. Pause it if you have to. There's nothing in here. You could also write that in hundredths as a fraction, 30 hundredths. And then you can take both of those fractions, write them as decimals, 3 tenths, 30 hundredths. So number eight, I'm thinking we're probably getting that one right across the board unless we're making a silly mistake, uh, but that one I'm not too worried about. Number nine, pay close attention to number nine because there is a chance, hint, hint, wink, wink, you will see one like this on your Fantastic Five next week. So we're looking for what, 462? I would start with A, work it out, and we're going to see if we can get that number. So 462, A says three hundreds, 16 tens, and two ones. Again, you're adding however many zeros that number has. If it says thousands, add three zeros. If it says hundreds, add two. Anyways, when I add those together, that gives me exactly what I'm looking for, 462. Does that still mean we should check B, C, and D? Absolutely. So we're going to do it. All right, B says three hundreds, six tens, and two ones. I add those together, I come up a little bit short, 362, so I can eliminate B. 
Moving on to C. Now, I feel like people are going to choose C and D because it looks like the number 462. But if you add those up, 462 tens, I mean, that's the biggest one yet. 1,020 is way beyond what I'm looking for. And then last but not least, I've got 460 tens, two ones. Did I do that right? Yep. And again, guys, that goes way above what I need. So if C and D look like the number that we're getting, that doesn't mean anything. You've got to take the time, work them out. And really, if you're adding with zeros, guys, it doesn't take you too long to do that work. It's an effort question. All right, let's push it on over to number 10. Very similar to number four. I would expect you to get this one right if you're getting that one right. Which of the following represents M on the number line? So I'll look at this one just a little bit differently. Uh, I would change all of these to hundreds. So 10 hundreds, 20 hundreds, 30 hundreds, 40 hundreds, 50 hundreds. And I would look for A, 35 hundreds. Well, I know that's going to be after 30 and it's going to be before 40. 35 hundreds would not be M, it would be K. Now, four tenths, I can look straight at the number line and see where it would fall. It would fall right here. That is not an M, that is L. Now, looking at C, 44 hundredths is more than 40. It's less than 50. It's about halfway. And if you look at that M, it's about halfway between those two, which is going to be your answer, C. And look, for D, 49 hundredths is after, is after 40 hundredths and before 50 hundredths. But 49 hundredths is that close to getting you to 50 hundredths, which would fall right almost on this line. So I could see how you would pick D. Um, I don't want anybody to miss it, but if you're going to miss it, hopefully you're not choosing A or B. I could kind of see you choosing D, but you got to think halfway is going to get you to about 45. 44 is right there if you look at the picture. So for number 10, you should have had C. And you don't necessarily have to change those uh, to tenths or hundredths, but it could help you if you're having trouble seeing them with tenths and hundredths both on the number line. For number 11, speaking of Fantastic Five, hint, hint, wink, wink, pay attention closely to this one. There are 128 pencils to be put into boxes. Each box can hold nine pencils. How many boxes can be completely filled? So guys, you see that word each. It does not always mean you're gonna multiply. It could mean you have to divide. Well guys, if you're getting equal groups of nine and your answer choices are getting smaller, Logically, it would make sense for you to divide. So we're going to take those 128 pencils. We're going to put them into equal groups of nine with our division. Dangerous monkey swipe bananas. Nine cannot go into one, but we know it can go into 12. Nope, it can go into 12 one time. There's my division, then I'll multiply. Nine times one gives me 12. Now, do a little bit of regrouping, but when I subtract that, it's going to give me three. And then I'd bring down the 8, and I would start over. So now I'm dividing into 38. 9 can go into 38 four times. 9 times 4 gave me 36. And if I subtract those two, it leaves me with 2. Nothing to bring down. That means I'm done. There is no such thing as 14 remainder two boxes of pencils. That means you've got to interpret your remainder. There's three possible answer choices. It could be 14 if you ignore the remainder. It could be two if you use the remainder. It could be 15 if you push up. So that right there eliminates C and D, and you don't even need to use two because it's not an answer choice. If you have paid attention to these questions in the past, there is one word in that question that gives you the answer, it's filled. If it's completely filled, that number is going to be right here every single time. It's going to be 14. Now, you're still going to have two pencils left over, and you're going to need to get an extra box for those, but the question is not asking how many boxes will I need for all my pencils. It's just asking how many are going to be full. Because if you did 14 times 9, that would be 126 of my 128 pencils. That's why I've got the remainder two. 
If I needed to know how many for all my pencils, I'd have 15 boxes. But the reason why logically 15 couldn't make sense, if you had 15 completely full boxes, that would mean you have 135 pencils. That's not possible. You only have 128. 15 could not be your answer. That is why number 11 would have been A, 14. If you divide correctly, Checking with multiplication is going to get you the answer every time, unless you read it wrong. And we're, we're kind of prone to doing really, really good math, but not so great on the reading. You've got to read those questions. All right, last but not least. Number 12, it says, last week, Jeff read eight pages of his book. This week, he has read six times as many pages as last week. How many pages has Jeff read all together during the two weeks? The words that should be standing out to you are times as many. I am using my multiplicative comparison, so I'm going to pull the two things out that I am comparing. And in this case, it is week one and week two. Now I'm just pulling and plugging. Uh, let's see here. This week, he has read six times as many as last week this week. So I guess I shouldn't say week one and week two. I guess I should say this week and last week. Let me clear the whole thing. Last week, this week. And this week was six times as many as last week. All right. Again, I'm pulling and I'm plugging. It says last week, Jeff read eight pages. Well, if last week has one box, I know it's worth eight. And the rest of them are going to be worth a read the question don't just automatically think i want to know this week it says all together meaning i need to know both for the two weeks they both get a star they are both important so i could add all those up if i wanted to but guys i see the number eight one two three four five six seven times so instead of doing repeated addition, I can knock out eight times seven. I could get 56, and my answer would be D. I would assume people who missed it are probably choosing C, and that means they did really good math, but they did not read what the question was asking. That's why those stars are so important. So um, first of all, I want to say, if you've taken the time not only to do these questions, but to take the time to watch these videos, to me, that's really impressive because you've had two weeks where you've been home, you've not been required to do this, but if you're taking the time to do it, even if you're being forced to do it, that means whoever's making you do it's a smart person. But if you're taking the time to do this, that's very impressive to me. That's EOG effort that we talk about. Uh, so again, there's not gonna be a video for the 25 question assessment tomorrow. I'm just going to do a live Zoom. It'll be open. Again, I'll send out that link and I'll post it on my class tag. But from 4 to 5 tomorrow afternoon, if you have a question on any of those 25 questions, pop in. I'll be happy to chat with you, try to solve it if I can. Um, secondly, I've said this every single day. Please, please, please join that Google Classroom. And if you're a parent watching this, make sure you're asking your child if they have joined that classroom. Um, the link is in their email. I'll be happy to send it again if they need it. Keep checking class tag. We're going to have that li live Zoom on Sunday. Um, me and Miss G to kind of give them a, a rundown of what next week is going to look like. Because tomorrow, or not tomorrow, Monday, we're hitting the ground running. So we want to make sure they have every bit of information that they need to make sure that they're good when they wake up Monday morning and we start rolling. So again, thank you all for watching. Very much appreciate it. I guess we won't see you tomorrow. Maybe I'll see you tomorrow if you're popping into that Zoom, but we'll see you soon. Thanks.